Check the description for the following discount codes. After I did that review of the Yeber V10 projector, which was like 230 pounds at the time of recording the video, um, and then I think it went on sale shortly after to be even less. But after I did that review um, and was so impressed with what you can get for very little money in the way of projectors, a lot of people in the comments said, Carl, could you review more of these sort of entry level cheap LED projectors? And I was like, well, unless people choose to send them to me, I can't just go out and keep buying projectors because <laughs> that would get expensive once you've done a few. But I emailed a couple of companies and just said, look, I've done a review of this Yeber V10 and my audience were, were really interested in it. I've asked me to do some more. Have you got something you'd like to send over? And Wimius were the only one that got back in touch and they said, yes, no problem at all. Um, after they verified who I was, weirdly, they said someone else had linked them to my video pretending to be me asking for a projector for review. So whether that was true or not, I don't know whether that was just their way of you know, getting me to verify who I was so I wasn't on the blag, I don't know, but it was all good. But anyway, long, long story short, they sent me one over. This is their top of the range K8 projector. It is 1080p still, just like the other one. Got, rem got to remember again, just like the other video, when I use words like impressive, great colors, blah, 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 it's for its price point of 249.99. It doesn't compare to a short throw laser projector that's 5,000 pounds. So we're, we're, the whole review, we bear in mind the price point. Um, but yeah, it's 1080p, 60 hertz. It does accept a 4K input, uh, and that will give you a slightly sharper image, similar to, um, some of you might not know actually, but even if you've got a 1080p display or a 1440p display, if you actually feed it like a, a 4K movie, for example, because it has to downscale it, it, the image is actually quite a bit sharper than if you just sent it a native 1080p or 1440p source. I suppose it's a little bit like super sampling in, you know, in, in a game, you render it higher and then you downscale it and the whole image looks a bit sharper with less jagged edges. You get a similar effect by providing a 4K image to a 1080p display. And this applies to televisions as well as projectors and monitors. But, um, but yeah, so it does accept a 4K input. This is a box in case anyone was interested. The least interesting part of the video. Now it comes in this cool little rucksack, which I've actually put on and it does fit me as a, as a grown adult. Um, so should you want to walk around places with your projector, and it isn't battery powered, so I don't know why they've chosen a rucksack. Um, then you can do. I think to be honest, this is probably like a camera bag because it's got like little pockets and separators and stuff inside it as well. But um, I'll just quickly show you what you get. You get your remote control. You get obviously your relevant country's power supply. You get a, um, a couple of different sort of component outputs or inputs, sorry and then you get an HDMI lead that I've not even unwrapped because I've got a long one that I'm using anyway. And then you get, there's some instructions in here as well, obviously I won't take you through page by page in the instructions, but they're in there. Uh, and then you get the projector itself. Now, to me, this feels and looks noticeably higher quality than what the Yeber V10 did. Again, it doesn't feel premium premium, but it feels noticeably nicer than the Yeber. I mean, it is a little bit more money. It's another 20 quid if I compare the price to this of what I reviewed the other one at. Um, it's actually got, it's got a lens cap, which is something that the other one didn't have. Um, the lens cap only fits on once you've retracted uh, the lens. If you have it too far out, I don't know. Oh, it must have been the opposite. I had it too far in, I couldn't get it on. So um, yeah, ignore that statement. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if you, if, you, if you make the lens flush with the unit, obviously there's nothing for the, the lens cap to go on to. Um, so when you want to put your lens cap on when you're finished, always make sure you've got a little bit of lens sticking out. But that's a little extra that we didn't get on the V10. I am going to reference the V10 a lot throughout this review because they're both entry level and similarly priced. 1080p 60 hertz projectors, LED backlit, so there's no bulb in here and it's not laser, it is LED. Uh, lumens wise, ignore what it says on the listing on Amazon, 
it's about 350 ANSI lumens, which is the official sort of measurement of brightness that, that you would use, um, rather than what these sort of entry level manufacturers like to quote, which I believe is the lumens measured at the source, at the very LEDs themselves, rather than what you actually get projected onto your wall at a specified distance. So again, entry level, not gonna be the brightest. But yes, we've got a, a lens cover. The front here is a material, which actually feels quite nice. The plastic feels well-made, solid, and not cheap and flimsy, which is nice. On the back here, we've got our power in. We have two USB ports. We have two HDMI ports, and then we have the AV out and the headphone out, AV in, sorry, not AV out, and the headphone out. But there on the top, we've got the focus adjust. We've then got um, vertical keystone correction as well. This one here, if you move it left to right, will adjust the keystone vertically. There is also four point keystone correction within the menu as well, just like the Yeber V10. So you can have it at sort of any angle you like, and you can go in and square it all up um, to be on your wall or on your projector screen, whatever it might be. Obviously, for best performance and an even spread of brightness, you don't really want it on the wonk like that. You wanna try and keep it level uh, and the same, you know, both left to right, and also horizontally uh, vertically if you can. If you can raise it up and keep it square versus having it low and tipping it up, that is the better choice because at this angle, you will get greater brightness intensity at the bottom of the image than you would at the top because you're adding distance for the light to travel. Um, but it has got four point keystone, so you can literally have it however you want. You can obviously mount it upside down on the ceiling. You can have it project um, from behind a screen onto a screen, or you can have it how we're gonna test it today, which is just firing forwards onto the white walls in my front room, just like I did in the previous review of the Yeber V10. Uh, we've also got the, the control buttons on the top there, should your batteries go flat in the remote or should you lose it or something like that. The only other feature on the actual casing itself is we have a little leg here that unscrews and that allows you to adjust the angle um, sat on whatever surface you've got it sat on. That again is something the Yeber V10 didn't have and I really thought it should have because like I had to actually pack it out under the bottom to, to get it at the angle I wanted because it was going lower than I wanted to. I mean, you could keystone it up but then you'd lose um, a portion of the image in the instance and the way I had it set up, that is. But yeah, so that little, that little leg there is, is definitely a bonus. It also looks, I've just noticed that we have a filter. Yeah, we do. We have a filter that pulls out for the fan on the side. Just a little mesh there. So it is obviously fan called, the, the uh, Yeber was as well. I would say the fan in this is Maybe a touch quieter than in the Yeber, but not by a lot. Um, so I think that's probably everything I need to show you physically. What I'm gonna do now is go downstairs. It's a bright sunny day here, just like it was when I did the Yeber review. So I'll show you what it looks like in daylight beside my 86 inch TV. I'll match the sizes up. Um, and then I'll close the curtains, and then later on when it gets dark, I'll get some footage of it in the darkness, just like I did with the previous review. We'll go at 86, we'll go at 150 inches, and I'll get out um, to that industrial unit I got to before with a white wall, and we'll get it up at 280 inches as well, just to compare the two. But what I'll say already is that this seems to perform almost identically to the Yeber V10 as far as visual performance goes. But I'll talk about it more um, as we get into the video. So first things first, here we are in my front room. I've matched the size of the projector screen to my actual television screen, which is obviously the one on the left hand side, the one that's much brighter. Um, so this is at 86 inches. Now obviously this is proper daylight. Let me just twist that a little bit. This is, this is full on daytime. It's like midday here. Uh, and there's actually sunlight coming in uh, and casting. If you look bottom right hand corner here, that is sunlight coming in through the window. So this is literally, you would never ever use a projector in this scenario, but 
For those of you that might want to know how it compares to a television for brightness, which I find interesting, this is how it compares um, with just a white Google page up against my LG Nano cell on the left there. Now, in fact, I may as well just take us through. Shall I take us through the, the menus? Can you see that on there? No, I'll move the camera. We'll go through the menus in a minute. But let's just throw up, uh, let's just grab YouTube and put up a couple of quick clips um, of something. What, what did I use last time? I used the Forza Horizon trailer, didn't I? So let's, let's use that again. In fact, let's, yeah, uh, let's find the trailer. Because then should anybody want to look back at my other review and see how that looked by comparison for the Yaber, you'll be able to. Let's turn the volume down so we don't get any content matches. So yeah, obviously, as we'd expect, it looks very dull and very washed out. And this is, you know, this is daytime with sunlight coming in the room. So don't be put off by what you see here. This isn't what a projector is supposed to be used for. At the very least, you would close the curtains here in the room, which I will do in a minute. So yeah, there's a very obviously washed out example. Um, in fact, I may as well just pause that in fact, no, let's, let's put up a quick clip of Street Fighter V because that's a very colourful uh, and vibrant game um, and probably a good one to demonstrate. Again, we're going we're gonna to keep it here in, in broad daylight just so you can see your worst case scenario. This is obviously how you would never ever use the projector, but you know, this is what it, this is what it looks like in broad daylight. Obviously that's terrible. So let me now go and close the curtains and then um, we'll see how much that improves it. So there you go, that's the curtains closed. Um, let's just skip back into a bit of Street Fighter where they're, actually, where they're actually fighting. It makes a massive difference. Even though on the footage here, it still looks way, it looks nowhere near as bright as my television Standing here in person, if I didn't have the TV to the left to compare, it's now actually perfectly usable for you know playing a game or even watching television or something on. It may not come across you know as well on camera as what I see obviously with my eyes in real life. But yeah, there's a little bit of street fire. Let's throw up that Forza uh, Horizon trailer again as well. Just for comparison, can I just go back? Yeah, I can. Yeah, so again, my TV obviously looks way, way brighter, but if it wasn't there, yeah, you could sit there and you could watch something or play a game on this projector in the daytime with the curtains closed. All of those close the curtains. The sun is literally glowing around my curtains, like over to the left-hand side there. There's a nice big sunshine halo around them. So there is actually still a lot of light in the room. I can see everything in the room around me without any issues at all, just like you would in any room in daylight if you pull the curtains closed. So yeah, that's at 86 inches, daytime curtains open, daytime curtains closed. Now, I may as well, yeah, I'll move the camera and we'll go through the menus now and I'll show you um, what there is there to adjust and play with. One thing just to, to briefly mention before we get into the menus is that just like with the Yaba V10, when it comes to focus, you can kind of have like the center and most of the image in focus with the edges being slightly blurry. I don't know whether this will show up on camera or not, but like the top left hand corner um, up there where it says new tab is very, very blurry. Um, almost to the point where the text is unreadable. But the center of the image is nice and sharp. And then over to the right hand side up there, when it comes back in focus when I move my hand, where it says Gmail and images, and then there's my little profile picture. The Gmail and the images is in focus and perfectly readable. So I'd say it's the last sort of two inches or so in the very upper and lowermost corners that is ever so slightly, or not ever so slightly, but quite out of focus. But again, this is a cheap projector. I guess you kind of expect these things to be the case. Um, and overall, I'm very impressed 
with this little projector, just like I was the last one for its price point. You get a good usable experience with enough brightness, good color saturation, a relatively sharp image for most of your image, and it goes pretty big, as you'll see a bit later on. Now, how do I bring the different menus up? So, all right, so here's your main menu. Again, you can even see here in the menu how saturated the colors are. What I will say is the input for going through these menus is a little bit slow, a little bit sluggish, a little bit delayed. The Yaba did have a faster response when it comes to going through the menus here. But we'll just quickly, okay, so yeah, videos, music and pictures and office, if you were to put a USB stick in with any of those formats on, you could open them up and display them on this projector here. You then got your, uh, your choice of input at the bottom there, which will be your HDMI, um, one and two in your AV input, just as you can see there. And if we go back, uh, you can cast from an iPhone or use Miracast from an Android device. At the top here, we've got settings. Um, we've got the Wi-Fi signal strength and Bluetooth. Uh, that would be lit up if it was connected. So let's go into these main options here. Your Wi-Fi, obviously, for connecting your Wi-Fi. Bluetooth for Bluetooth. Image settings is where you'll do... You did a few preset picture modes. Um, can I just go left and right? Okay, yeah, soft, vivid, standard, and then user, which is what I was on because I tweaked the contrast and the saturation just a little bit. I think I may have turned the brightness down a touch. Now, what you've got to remember here is I may as well show you, in fact, by cranking the brightness up, you will wash the image out a little bit. So that's 100% brightness. And whilst it is quite a bit brighter, we've now got a fairly washed out image because what that will wash out is the blacks. If you don't know, brightness is basically your black level control and contrast adjusts how white your whites are. So we could crank the contrast up and you'll see we get brighter whites. In fact, it might even be, I think I left it at 75 because it then crushed the blacks by having the contrast up too high. But you can play around with this to your heart's content. Um, you've got your color temperature standard warm and then cool. Again, you can choose that depending on what you feel looks best. And again, if you're projecting onto a white wall, a gray wall, a projector screen, maybe you'll want it differently. Noise reduction, I don't really like that um, because it's just artificially almost unsharpening the image, I think is how that works. So I just leave it off. Overscan, I actually can't remember what overscan does. On a monitor, that would give you a slightly larger image. Doesn't appear to do anything here, but default was on, we'll leave it on. I did look it up when I first got the projector, but I've forgotten. <laughs> but it's obviously not hugely important. Um, we've then got a custom zoom option, which is as it sounds. Uh, see now I've gone into here, it's just removed my keystone correction. Um, but you can adjust the horizontal, the vertical zoom, and then the scaling, which should do both together, I imagine. Yes, yeah, you just lock them together and then it will zoom in and out. I'm not gonna zoom in and out because I don't need to. I've got it matched to my TV size. That's where I want it. Um, see, now I've come, now I've gone into there. That's, uh, can we turn custom zoom off? Will it put my keystone settings back? No, it won't. Okay, so that's fine because I'm gonna show you how to do that in a minute anyway. So this is just where you're choosing where the projector is positioned relative to the screen. Is it in front? Is it behind? Is it on the ceiling? Again, front or behind. Useful options to have. And then we'll go into the keystone settings. Now, there is four corner keystone, which is the most useful and the one that I'll actually adjust now. So I think I need to go across here and just bring it in a touch. And then this bottom right hand corner is too low, so we just bring that up until it all looks nice and square. I think now I need to bring this top corner down just a fraction. Yeah, that looks about square to me. It may not do to you on the camera because the camera's not pointing perfectly at it. But that's how keystone correction works. Um, you've then got your four side keystone correction. Uh, I think that's probably removed the settings I've just used. That will tilt the whole image like to the left or to the right. Uh, so this is just like a, if the 
projector isn't sitting square, you can do quick adjustments and the same for tilting it backwards or forwards, however you want to describe that. Now there is also a mechanical adjuster that does this look on the top of the projector that I can adjust and do that as well. So you've got software and hardware adjustment for the vertical tilt. So quite a lot of adjustment really. And then you can just go into here and obviously reset it. So let's just go back into the cornerstone, cornerstone, <laughs> into the keystone correction and put this back to where I think I had it. Was it like three and then this was up six or five? I think that looks pretty square. Close enough. Anyway, you can always play around with that, you know, yourselves and get it how you want. So that's how your keystone correction works. Um, system upgrade would be a firmware update and uh, factory reset obviously does a factory reset. Language obviously changes the language. So we'll come out of that. Um, we will go back to our HDMI one source, which is my computer. And we'll just have a look at the menu you can bring up in here as well, along the bottom. I think it's basically everything that you can also do. Well, everything relating to, yeah, image. Oh yes, yeah, so you've got your different aspect ratios there, should you want to play around with that. Your keystone settings, four side keystone, four corner keystone and reset. Your different color modes, cool, standard and warm. And then, yeah, so everything that just timed itself out, even though I was using it, weird. But yeah, everything is there just the same as it was otherwise. So I think that will do us for the menus, nothing else to see there. Uh, you've seen it in daytime now, both with the curtains open and the curtains closed. As I say, my overall impression is really, really good. Just like with the Yeba V10 for the money, um, I'm super impressed with what you can get these days. If I, I'm, I'm standing behind the fan, so I'm going to shut up and you can listen to the sound of the fan. Now, I'm, my microphone is literally six inches from it. And obviously, if I speak, that will give you some sort of reference point for how loud the fan is. I'm speaking quite softly, which is unusual for me. So, I would say this fan is quieter than the Yeba, and you were in use with some audio on, you'd never ever hear it either. The air coming out of it is surprisingly warm, actually. But yeah, I think that's all we need to do for now. I'll wait till it gets dark and then we'll get some footage of it um, here at 86 inches in the pitch black. And I'm gonna use the wall that's on the side there, which will get me up to 150 inches, just like I did in my previous review of the Yeba. And I'll also take both of them and put them side by side so we can compare color and brightness um, of both these two sort of entry level projectors. Okay, so it's dark now, like completely pitch black. And the only thing I will say to notice here is my LG TV on the left puts out an awful lot of ambient light into the room. Like my whole room looks fairly well illuminated now, even though it's totally pitch black. Um, so what you see on the camera here may still look a little more washed out than it would do in real life if you didn't have an 86 inch TV literally beside where you're projecting your projector onto. So we'll get some footage in a minute with the TV off. But I just wanted to show this as a comparison in the dark to, you know, a, a decent television, uh, literally side by side with the projector. Um, obviously it should look a lot better than it did in the daytime <laughs> because now we don't have anywhere near the ambient light. So let's quickly throw that Forza trailer on as well, just because it's something that you'll all be familiar with. Uh, now there it is. But yeah, everything obviously now just looks a lot brighter, um, much better color saturation, and, and obviously the blacks more importantly, or most importantly, look a lot blacker without so much ambient light in the room. But yeah, this, um, again, to my eye, stood here in the front room, it looks perfectly usable. Obviously not as good as the TV, it's never going to be, but for the price, perfectly usable. Something else I've noticed here, compared to the Yeba V10, when I did this with the Yeba V10, it looked like there was a slight delay between the TV 
display updating and the Yeba V10 updating when changing from scene to scene, um, like sort of an input lag, basically. It looks, I can't see really any input lag variation between the two here. Now we will do a back-to-back -back test with the Yeba in a minute to compare input lag. But I would say this, this projector here, the Wimius K8, may have slightly lower input lag perhaps than what the, the Yeba did. But we'll see, because I'll do a side by side. Anyway, that's enough of the side by sides to the television. This is, of course, quite an unfair <laughs> test and demonstration. Let's get the TV off. Let's just look at the projector on its own, and then we'll go 150 inches on the wall here um, and just show you literally what it can do on its own in an ideal environment with you know with no other sources of light in the room. Here we're at 150 inches, which is big as I can go indoors. And you know, it's just like with the other one, it's perfectly usable um, and surprisingly impressive for such a cheap projector. You know, what my settings, should you want to know what they are, I've got the contrast at 90. The brightness at 50, um, sharpness is left at 50, and saturation is at 75. And that gives me what I would call the best image that I can that I can sort of get out of my initial tweaking with this. And this is 150 inches. So in fact, let me put my let me just put my microphone down and I'll go walk in front of it so you can see how big it actually is. Yes, that's, I'll put this mic back on. Yes, that's pretty big, bigger than anybody would, would need. Well, you'd have to have a pretty big wall or room with a wall to go bigger than 150 inches. Um, what else should we have a look at at this sort of size? I suppose we may as well once again go back to the Forza trailer. That's what we've been using. So the last thing I'll do is obviously head off out now up to the industrial estate and um, try and get it set up on the wall of that of that building that I went on to once before yeah here we go Let's just get this up nice and big obviously the wall I'm on here has a door in the middle of it and a radiator in the bottom right hand corner that's why you've got some and a light switch slap bang in the middle, so that's why you might see some straight lines um, that wouldn't normally be there disappear. Bar. I'm just waiting for the. Uh, there we go. It's better. YouTube dims the image when the um, like timeline slide is at the bottom, so that's obviously gone now. But yeah, you know, again for the price, you just can't really grumble. Uh, Sound-wise, the internal speaker, I think this one actually has two internal speakers. I'd have to check, actually. I can only see, I can actually, no, I can only see one. But it, I mean, it's adequate. It makes noise. In a perfect world, you'd hook up, you know, a soundbar, a Bluetooth speaker, whatever, a stereo system, anything other than the internal speaker. Because it, you know, from a speaker point of view, obviously, it isn't very good. Um, now I can't show any sort of movie footage because last time I tried that I got a content match. So um, I don't know what else I could put on that isn't going to get me content matched. Any like anything sort of um, film trailers or music videos seems to flag up a content match, which is of course no use. Um, oh, I tell you what, I did watch the other day, and that was um, a motorbike game called Ride Four that look quite good. Let's just stick that up, see what that looks like. Out of interest. My brother's into his motorbikes and I sent him a link to this because I thought it looked quite good. But again, it's just standing here at 150 inches. It's just absolutely massive. Quite ridiculous. So whether you want to play 
beat em ups or a platform game. And we, you, you could put retro games on this thing. That would be quite funny. Should we, should we get some like Sonic the Hedgehog footage up? That would be amusing. Like on the old Mega Drive. Because you can obviously play whatever you want for this projector, whether it's, here we go, 1991, Sonic the Hedgehog. Let's see what this looks like. <laughs> it's the biggest Sonic I've ever seen. Wow. If I was a kid when Sonic came out in 1991, well, I was a kid, and had a projector that, or a screen that was 150 inches big, I'd be over the moon. That's just a ridiculous way to play retro games. You can count every pixel, obviously, but it's amusing nonetheless. <laughs> In fact, let me just go stand near it again so you can see scale here. Yeah, it's just ridiculously big. Um, but no, like I say, for the money, we can't really complain. So what I'll do now, I'm going to pop into the kitchen. I think I'm going to do this because I'm going to get the, the V10 and we're going to put them side by side to compare input latencies and image quality. And I can't do that here because I haven't got another surface the right size to put them both on side by side, but I can in the kitchen. And the kitchen wall's flat without a door in it as well. So let me get that set up and we'll compare input latencies and overall image quality between these two sort of entry level budget projectors. So here we are side by side with the Yeber V10, which is the display you see on the left. And the Wimius K8 is the one on the right. The screen sizes are probably about 50, 50 to 55 inches maybe. Yeah, 55, 60 inches, something like that. It's the best I could do with the wall space I have available. Now one thing I've noticed straight away, if we look down at the rope, let me see if I can point my finger, hold on, put my finger in front of one of these projectors. If we look kind of here, where that rope is, the Wimius, is much, much clearer and more detailed. It's weird, it's, it's not like it's out of focus on the Yeber, it's just a bit darker and a bit less detail and I've played with the, uh, the sort of picture settings on both of them to get the best I can here. So I don't know whether it's, it's like the overall image is, is that bit clearer and sharper on the K8 than what it is on the Yeber V10. Now obviously we, we're looking at static images here, so we're gonna be able to pick out differences. Oh, one thing I will say is the, um, the focus wheel is much smoother on the K8 as well than what it is on the Yeber. But I mean, the K8 is a bit more money, sort of 20 or 30 quid. So these sort of additional things may be what we get for that little bit extra. But let's get some moving images. Oh, in fact, let's look at, yeah, let's look at this. Google page for comparison. I don't know how well this would come across on camera. Looking at this, they're almost, almost identical. I'd say the K8 has got a bit more vibrance to it, maybe a touch brighter as well. But um, nothing, nothing massive when we're talking about low end projectors. In fact, what I just noticed then was I think there's a little more, the Yeber looks a little cooler. There was a, a slight hint of blue. Whereas I think the colors on the K8 are a bit warmer, even though they're both set to standard. So maybe that's something that can play with as well. But let's, let's, bring, up our, let's bring up our Street Fighter V, first of all. Again, I'm sticking with things that we've already looked at because then we've got a decent reference point. Oh, some sound coming out of the 
projectors. Let's just turn that down. Go on, down you go. Yeah, the, um, the speakers on the K8 are definitely better than on the, the Yeber as well. So let's just full screen this. Go back to the start of the fight and have a little look. Ooh. I think... God, do you know, it's so close. I think the Wimius is definitely a little sharper, a little clearer, a little more saturated. Just overall, a slightly better image. Again, I don't know how well this is going to show up on my camera. There's, there's really very little in it. And without this sort of side-by-side -side comparison, you'd probably not notice the difference. What I'm using here is an HDMI out of my laptop into a unnecessarily expensive HDMI powered splitter. I've got three identical HDMI cables, bought them all brand new just for this test so we can get a fair gauge of what we're playing at here. I'm just curious, I wonder if we can get like a, a countdown timer Just to um, compare like, oh yeah, that should do it. Let's see whether there's any latency between the two. See wh which one changes first. Wow, that's not, that's not easy to, to see. Let's just go back again. No, if there is a late, I'll try and slow this down in post. So let's stick on that Forza trailer and go with that. You can see these two are really close, um, really close together in performance. I think perhaps the Wimius maybe just has the edge on image quality here. It's just a little sharper, a little more saturated, a little brighter. Cat, get up or remove, you're right in the way. Good timing that was. Um, but yeah, we'll just, just have a look through these and see what you think for yourselves. And, um, and then I'll pack everything away and we'll draw some conclusions. But I, I think the Wimius does just have the edge. Um, I definitely think the Wimius looks warmer and the Yeba looks cooler. Be interesting to see if I put the Yeber to its warm setting, whether they look any closer or not. Again, this, this is just to my eyes, it may not show up like this on camera. Anyway, that's enough testing. I think we've probably all seen enough. So in conclusion, what do I think of this Wimius K8 LED budget projector? I actually think it's really good um, for the money. Remember, remember this whole review is about its price points, 249.99 in the UK, whatever that is in dollars and around the rest of the world. There will be Amazon links. Um, compared to its nearest competitor, which was the Yeber V10, uh, I think this does have the edge. Now, let, in fact, let me look at the price of the Yeber V10s because they were, like when I reviewed the Yeber V10, that was 230 pound and then it was, instantly discounted so let's just see what they're going for at the moment so at the moment they are at Yeber v10 limited time deal blah 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 so they're down from 230 they're currently at 187 so at the moment that puts this what is that 50 63 quid more now that's actually quite a chunk when we're talking about things that are only 
£187 and £250. That's a good, well, it's more than 25%, 30%, whatever, 30, yeah, 30% more, give or take. Do we get 30% worth of extra for that money? But at the same time, you can, you know, whilst it's percentage wise, it's quite high, it's like it's only another 63 quid. Still doesn't take it to a lot of money. So, what, what do we get extra? We get the lens cap all important. We get what I consider a slightly better build quality, a quieter fan, better sound, overall a better image quality, a little brighter, a little better saturation, and a sharper, clearer image that I'm guessing is, is down to the lens itself because obviously I focused on both. We get the height adjustable leg there to tilt it. We get a physical um, uh, vertical keystone correction as well as the software keystone correction. They have all the same features inside, um, you know, they put USB sticks in, you can do pictures and videos and music and, and Word documents and stuff like that should you want to, and they all have the same colour and picture adjustments. Oh, that's a good point. I did play around with switching the Yeber, because they were both on standard in that side-by-side -side clip. So I switched them both to cool, both to warm, and the difference just gets exaggerated in each direction. So this is a little warmer than the Yeba, and the Yeba is a little cooler than the Wimius. Um, you can't sort of tweak one down to cool. You can't put this down to cool and it then look like the Yeba it doesn't. It looks very cool. And if you then put the Yeba onto warm, it looks way warm um, compared to this. So comparing standard for standard, this is a little warmer. The Yeba is a little cooler perhaps. Uh, what else are the differences? Oh, the Bluetooth on this does actually work without phenomenal latency, which it didn't on the Yeber. Negatives for this, obviously it's more expensive, and the, uh, the UI, the responsiveness of the remote going through the menus is noticeably slower than the Yeber, but it's not a deal breaker because you only do it every now and then, and, and then you're sorted anyway. And it's not unusably slow, it's just that typical, I'm a bit cheap, kind of delay. So the projector itself, just like the Yeber V10, gets a strong recommendation. Would I spend the extra £63 knowing the differences? I think I probably would, but that's because I've had an opportunity to compare them side by side. If you don't ever see them side by side, you will not be disappointed with either projector. You'll be more than happy with both. So those of you that bought the V10 after my review of that, don't kick yourselves going, if only I'd waited and seen Carl's review of the Wimius K8, it isn't that much better. I mean, you'll see in the footage, hopefully, anyway, the sort of differences. So yeah, I'd still be happy with either. Um, this, of course, will be the one that I use should I ever use a projector for things. Oh, I didn't, I didn't get to go and try it out at 280 inches like I did with the V10 because it's absolutely smashing down with rain outside this afternoon slash evening. Um, and I wanted to get this video wrapped up and done. Um, so, but judging by its performance at 86 inches, 150 inches, and the fact that it's a little brighter than the V10, I'm sure this will perform just the same at 280 inches as what the Yeber V10 did, with the added bonus of being a little clearer and a little brighter. So you can definitely use it for big screen sim, you know, as we discussed in the, in the previous review, you know, big screen sim racing, um, in fact, I'll put a clip up of me doing it with the, with the Yeber, sat there with a controller, um, playing some ACC on the wall in my front room, perfectly usable. If your budget is 250 quid, or if you want to get the Yeber, 187 pound, whatever I just said it was, and you want a huge display, you can't go wrong with either of these two entry-level projectors, whether it's sim racing, whether it's gaming, whether it's watching YouTube or a film, whatever it might be, Manage your expectations. They are cheap entry level LED projectors. They're not five grand short throw laser projectors. Bearing all that in mind, they work brilliantly and they have no money in the world of projectors and for the size of the display that you can actually project. So, yes, links in the description um, to this. Check out my other video of the Avery if you want to, but basically, much of a muchness. Um, as always, thank you very much for watching and take it easy.